Hi, welcome to module 12 and we will be talking about geothermal energy. And just as a quick review, we're talking about the Earth's internal heat as a source for energy and everything that we would be tapping into will be simply the crust layer. So we're going back to your simple Earth science. Um, and once again, we're not even getting anywhere close to what's going on in inner core, outer core or mantle layer. We're just tapping into a uh, semi-molten layer within crust. As far as just talking about temperatures and depths, you can see depths into the earth in miles here, and you can see the temperatures reaching stuff like 7,200 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that just means that as I go down into the earth's layers, I don't even have to go down that far, about eight feet to 12 feet into the earth will hit a natural temperature of about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why we would talk about in the past before the advent of electricity and refrigerators, one of the ways that we would store and keep food cool would be to dig a root cellar, which was a, a simple structure into the ground, a little cellar structure into the ground and tapping into that natural 55 degrees, keeping the temperatures cool in the summer to keep food and something relatively warmer so that it wouldn't freeze in the winter months so that we could keep food. As far as where is the best potential for geothermal energy, the best places is to look at plate tectonic activity and picking spots where the plate boundaries are meeting. And so once again, like I said, we're reviewing sort of earth science, just quickly touching on. If you uh, go back and take a look at your earth science facts, you, you remember that we have different plate boundaries around the earth's, um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, around the earth's surface. And those plate boundaries create excellent places where magma is pooling to the surface and therefore creates areas where the heat energy is more readily available at less distance into the earth. So I don't have to punch a well drill down very far to tap into the temperatures, which brings me to right here in New York where we are in Valhalla, we're actually in the middle of the North American plate. And therefore we are not actually a good location for geothermal, which is why it's not a topic that we're talking about in great detail because it's not something that you see much activity in. As far as the other coast, now if I jump over to the West Coast, because I would be on the border of the North American plate and potentially the Juan de Fuca plate or the Pacific um, plate, that I would have huge amounts of geothermal energy. And so a lot of the examples that you'll see in this chapter will be from the Pacific coast. As far as jobs having to do with geothermal install, in our area, if a company does a geothermal HVAC system, so a heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, if they do it four times a year, they're doing big business in geothermal on our coast, on the East Coast. On the other hand, if you're on the West Coast, you'll be doing jobs potentially every week or every two weeks. Once again, plate tectonic boundaries, just showing you a little bit of that activity. This is your natural plate spreading. So this is a plate spreading apart, and then we have a subducting plate. So we have diverging, right, converging plate. And then there's transform where it's sliding by, but there's no transform in this picture. Obviously, where magma is pooling up to the top of the crustal layer, we know that the crustal layer is fairly thin in that location and easier to tap into that heat energy. And as always, or as we've been talking about throughout the semester, with the exception of wind turbines and solar panel systems, everything else is playing with some type of water-based system. And geothermal, when I'm producing it for electricity, is no exception. I'm talking about steam. So I'm looking for water that I can tap into that is either so hot that it will boil when I bring it to the surface, so it's kept under pressure in the earth, and therefore it cannot act like a gas, but once I give it enough space, it will act like a gas and therefore I'm working with steam again. This is an example of a geyser and this is a steam geyser as it pools up through the surface of the earth. 
allowing me to catch on to that water rock. And here's some examples of natural areas where you see water pooling. And a great example of this is Yellowstone. If any of you guys have vacationed at Yellowstone, and if you haven't, you should, because it is absolutely amazing. It is a natural wonder. Um, but as you know or have seen in these locations, you can see that there's steam vents. So this is a place where the geothermal activity of the groundwater system is actually boiling the water and so it's coming out of the earth as steam. This is a, a hot bath so we have a natural spring, a hot spring that's come to the surface and this water once again is boiling. This is not, you can't swim in this. This isn't jacuzzi water. This is uh, just near boiling about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is above 212 degrees Fahrenheit because that's the temperature of boiling water. This is a mud bath where the earthen materials, the clays, are mixing with the water as it comes up, and so it's kind of like bubbling mud. And then right here we have um, a natural concavement of the steam vent as it comes out, and that's known as a fumarole. The, the air is coming out of this at such fast speeds that it actually whistles and makes a noise. Um, just talking about geothermal power plants around the United States, there are quite a few. Once again, they're on the other coast. They're near the West Coast. But you can see that the U.S. has a high number of geothermal power plants. Now, these are not people who are tapping geothermal energy for their home heating. These are actually electrical power plants where I'm tapping into the groundwater system, which is boiling and bringing up that boiling water so that it can turn a, t a steam turbine. Where would you want to look? Once again, the areas in the red, which happen to coincide with the natural plate tectonic boundaries from the previous slides. As far as how we go about it, there are some different simple systems that we start to employ when we're looking at putting in a geothermal system. The first one is just uh, satellite imagery and aerial photography. We're looking for a volcanological study. So I want to look for places where magma is pooling towards the surface, volcanologists, volcanoes, magma, uh, geologic and structural mapping. So I want to look and make sure that that area is something that I can actually tap. So I want to be able to punch a well into the surface of the earth so I can bring up the steam. A geochemical survey. I want to make sure that when I bring up that steam that that is not a contaminated water system with high amounts of sulfur or nitrous oxide or some type of acidic material that I do not want on the surface like high levels of uranium. I do not want to pull that up and have uranium-based steam entering my atmosphere. Geophysical survey. I want to make sure that by penching this well that I'm not causing a huge problem. I don't want to punch into something that will then bring huge amounts of water to the surface that I cannot uh, control or close off. And then finally, temper temperature gradient and hole drilling. I don't want to punch so far down that I will constantly melt my machinery and instruments, but I also want to make sure that I am going to get enough heat energy from that activity without having to punch a well that is so deep it's unmanageable. So it's working within your means. This is a, a simple well rig. This is actually an exploration well rig. So this is just a, a well punch that I would punch in to do something that wouldn't actually go down that far. This is your standard kind of well rig for even a, a natural home system. So if I wanted to punch a well or if I want to punch a, a pylon to go into the earth for something like a bridge system, that would be the standard rig that I would use. Just some pictures of people pulling up rock coring and doing measurement holes and temperature gradient readings. Here is the cutesy diagram showing us footage and temperatures. And like I said, most of the earth within the simple areas closest to us is right around 55. And so this is Celsius. So right around 30 here in the temperature gradient as I'm working my way up. And as we work our way down, we can see it kind of tips to colder. And then once I get past a thousand feet, it starts to get really warm. And then everything over a hundred is boiling. So if I punch down a thousand five hundred feet, which is very deep for a standard drinking water well, but not very deep for an electric geothermal well, um, I can see that I would get into those temperature gradients. And here is a picture of that reservoir as it comes up as steam. Here's another well test, and here's a vertical well test. 
So now I'm going to pick up with actually the mechanical systems that we use to produce electrical energy on large scale power sources in the next video part two.